So welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here. Today I wanted to show you how to set up your own VPN server using the Synology NAS. Now if you guys are new to the channel, I have reviewed a, a couple Synology products in the past, a couple network attached storage as well as their router and amazing products guys work really well but the best thing about Synology is that their user interface is simple so just looking at the dashboard here I have my Plex server running off this I have my MB server I also have Cloud Station, which basically is a, a server that you can use to automatically back up your photos and you can use file sharing very cool application as well and I'll try to link all those videos in the description but today we're talking about setting up a VPN server in this scenario guys what this will allow you to do is connect back to your house no matter where you are so essentially if you're on the road and you want to access those resources at your house you can simply vpn in see those resources see those shares see those cameras talk to that file share and, and this would also be great if you own a business guys so imagine having your employees just have uh, a place that they can connect to that way you guys can view the same file you can kind of collaborate on on many things just have them connect back to the vpn server access the resource and that way everyone's on the same page so before we jump into it just know that we have a couple different protocols that we can choose from so just a quick overview of what's available and i'll go ahead and leave the link to this page as well where you guys can go ahead and read more in depth of which protocol is going to work best for you so we have pptp l2tp slash ipsec open vpn and we also have chameleon so take a quick look you can see the supported applications there vpn security is going to be a big one guys so you can see right here pptp is has basic and encryption when we get to LTTP slash IPsec has a high encryption does check data integrity and encapsulate the data twice as far as OpenVPN is going to have the highest security authenticates data with digital certificate so security is one thing you want to look at we also want to look at the speed PPTP is going to be the fastest however that doesn't mean that is the best so it is the fastest due to the lower security so security is not a big thing to you you might want to consider using pptp now ltp2 slash ip6 does require more cpu to process and open vpn is going to have the best performance uh it's going to have fast speeds even on connections with high latency across great distances so between the three options we're going to have on synology today i'm going to do the open vpn setup now if you guys uh want me to do the pptp i will go ahead and do so or if you want me to do the l2 tp i will go ahead and do that just drop your comments in the comment section and let me know all right let's go ahead and jump into the setup so the application we're going to be using is vpn server and this can be found in your synology package center guys so if you guys are new to synology you go ahead and go to your package center and right here you just search for vpn and it should pop up so there it is right there click install and it should be good to go so once you have it installed go ahead and launch vpn server all right so this is going to be the basic setup like i said you have three basic options there guys you have pptp OpenVPN and L2TP slash IPsec. Like I said, the one that we're gonna be working with today is gonna be OpenVPN. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna select OpenVPN and we're just gonna go ahead and enable it. So you can see here, now you have a couple options. So you do have the dynamic IP address. We also have the maximum connection numbers. This is the amount of people you want to be able to access at the same time. So think about it guys, if you have 100 people connected at the same time, it's gonna pretty much bog down your system. So you wanna take this into consideration along with if you're running anything else on your Synology NAS, how this might affect performance. So if I'm watching 4K Plex videos all day, I might wanna keep this number as low as possible. And also note that this is using port 1194. So just keep that in mind, that is the default. The protocol for this one, we're gonna leave it at UDP. And as far as the encryption, like I said, you can go ahead and play with it, but I'm just gonna leave it at AES 256. Now, very important right here, guys, if this is not checked to allow clients to access servers LAN, and you might lose some of those functionalities like if you guys are remote and in, or if you just wanna do certain things on your network, if this is not enabled, you might not get those options. So definitely, recommend turning that on so now that we have everything set up guys we're just going to go ahead and click apply all right pop-up is going to tell us hey make sure you're forwarding port 1194 so make sure udp 1194 is open so we're going to click ok and we're going to go over and just verify that's open so the good thing about synology's 
NAS is that they actually have a tool that talks to your router directly. Depending on your comfort level, if you have the NAS, the easiest way to go through here and do it, or you can go to your router and make sure that port is forward. It's gonna depend on which router you have. So you might have to do a Google search or check your router's manual. So to do it on the Synology NAS, we're gonna go to our control panel. And right now we're in advanced mode, so you can switch back and forth to basic. So if you only see a couple icons like I'm seeing here, you want to switch that to advanced mode and then you should see this. So now we're going to click on external access. So you can see I already have external access, but for the router, we're going to go to a router configuration. And now we're just going to go ahead and click set up router. And that way you can automatically talk to your router in the future just to apply those ports that we need for it. So very useful tool in my opinion. And you can see the pop up that says your UPnP router has passed the compatibility test. So universal plug and play rules basically means that Synology should be able to make those requests in our behalf. Now we're going to hit next and we're going to go ahead and click apply. So like I said, depending on your router, if you're not compatible, you might have to go into your router itself and set up the ports that you need for it in. The manual should have instructions, but if you do a quick Google search along with your router model, you should be able to pull this up as well. So now we're going to go ahead and create that port. Remember that we need 1194 UDP forwarded. And let me just pull this over to the side. This is the port that we need to forward. So we're going to go to create. We're going to do a custom port click next and this port might be forwarded already but I'll just go through the process so UDP and we're gonna 1194 and we're gonna do 1194 for both we're gonna click apply and we're gonna click save all right click OK find the rule so that's one way to add the custom port however if it fails or you just can't get it going that method you can go ahead and go to create now this time if you go to built-in application click next if you go down and you can see right now UDP 1194 is an option there so I'll click on that click apply click save it's gonna give us that pop-up and you can see that connection came back okay so the next step, and this is very important guys, you want to make sure that your IP address is static. And for most people, you're not going to have a static external IP address uh, unless you're a business or you pay extra for that particular feature. So what Synology does, it creates a URL that's particular to your IP address. And what it does, it updates it constantly guys. So every couple minutes it'll check if the ip address change it will go ahead and just apply that setting and that way if the ip address changes it doesn't interrupt your service so to set this up we're going to go to ddns and then you will be brought to a page like this so on the service provider we're going to click on the drop down we're going to select synology now you're going to get to pick a host name so if you want it to be triple m you can go ahead and put that there if you want it to be network NAS for all or or a company name for that matter you can go ahead and just select that there the domain name you can either pick synology.me hit the drop down you have a couple more options you get to pick your host name so you can essentially name it whatever you want uh, unless that name is already taken then you'll have to change it and now we see that we have that set in when we go back and one more thing we need to do and uh, if you have a network attached store chances are you already have this set up but you want to make sure that your internal IP address for your NAS is set to static. And you can do this from the router or you can do it from the Synology NAS itself. So to get to that, we're gonna to go to our control panel. We're gonna go down to network. Then we're gonna to go to network interface. If you click on bond, click on edit, IPv4. And mine's set to get network configuration automatically. Uh, I do have this set static on the router, but if you don't, you can use a manual configuration. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as is, but like I said, with Synology, you can set it one way or another. So next we wanna set up the users that's actually gonna be using VPN. So to do that, we're gonna go to control panel, I'm gonna go to users, I'm gonna create. So the required fields are the name, and password so let's go ahead and set those all right so we do have a strong password we're going to click next all right so we're going to click next 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 and we'll just click apply just to get the account created so to verify that we're going to go back to vpn we're going to go to privilege 
and you can see right here and you can see on the james i do have access to all three vpns so now we're going to need our certificate for james so to get that we're going to go down to open vpn i'm going to go to export configuration and it should go ahead and download a zip file for you and the file is right here it's not a large file you want to get that to every computer that's gonna be accessing this vpn so here we are on another computer and i will be connecting to a hotspot later i just to test everything out but you can see i have the open vpn zip file right there if i double click on it i have a couple files in here so one file that you have to pay attention to is the vpn config file so let's go ahead and open that with the text editor so you can do a right click i'm going to open and we're just gonna click on more apps and we're gonna use notepad to edit it now one thing we want to change is where it says your server ip address we want to go ahead and delete that and this spot you can either put an external ip address if your ip address is static or if you plan to manage it yourself and in this case whatever we chose as our host name we can go ahead and use that so for mine i think it was triple m dot me but it depends what you created so once you have your host name or your IP address in here, go ahead and save the changes. So I'm just gonna put mine on my desktop. And on the file type, you wanna go to all, and you just wanna put .ovpn. You wanna make sure it has that same extension, guys. All right, save it, and there's a config file. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and download the OpenVPN client. So we're gonna to go to the Windows, we're gonna to go to the 64-bit installer. All right, let's go ahead and run it. We will see this at the first load, guys. It says no readable connection profiles found. We copy the config files to the following location. So we're gonna use the import option, so. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. So the VPN is running, but to get it imported, we're gonna go ahead and hit the arrow. And you can see where it says OVPN right there. We're gonna right click. All right, so we do have two options here. Settings and port file. We're gonna go ahead and import file. We're gonna go to our desktop. VPN config. Open. And you can see file imported successfully. Click OK. All right, so we go ahead and launch it, and now it's asking for the username and password that we created back on the Synology NAS. All right, so so the username was James, and I did create a pretty strong password. Right, we're gonna go ahead and save the password and click OK. We're gonna allow access. I am connected and you can see it did assign an IP address based on that IP scheme that I chose. So my IP address for this connection is 10.0.0.6. But to truly test this, guys, I'm going to jump off my home network, set up on a hotspot, and we're just going to make sure everything is still good to go. All right, so I am connected. You can see I'm connected to my iPhone. And let's go ahead and we're going to launch OpenVPN. And again, guys, it is going to show the icon right here in the bottom does bring up a credential let's go ahead and click ok all right we're going to allow all right so it's going through you can see it is connected guys it gives me another ip address and now i should be able to act as i i would be if i'm on the network guys so let's open our file explorer let's go to our network see if we can map a driver see the drives that's available You can see I am in my uh, network drive. This is my NAS, by the way, and I'm connected uh, via VPN. But also, if I wanted to remote into any computer on the network, uh, given if you know the IP address or the host name. So this is uh, uh, one of my uh, mini PCs. So all right, you can see, found it right away. And we'll just give it a second. Remember, guys, I am connecting over my phone's network. And T-Mobile has been really horrible as of late. 
So everything's up and running, looks pretty good. And I can just think of a thousand use cases. One of the tool that you can use with this is actually on my Synology router where you can go in, you can set up wake on land. So that way you can go in, you can remotely power your computer up, remotely shut it down. And maybe I'll do a video on that just to show you guys how that will work. But for me, for someone who has a lot of resources on my main computer that I use, uh, if I'm away, I would love to be able to remote in, turn it off when I want to, turn it on when I want to. One thing I should mention is that for Max, there is a certificate and maybe, like I said, I'll do a follow up video on that, but there's a certificate that you can use to uh, make sure you're connected as well. So I, I have reviewed a couple of Synology products in the past. I'll go ahead and link a couple of the network attached storages in the description of this video. Also, if you guys have any questions or special requests, drop it in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Smash your thumbs up as well, and I'll catch you on the next one.